Did you hear about the restaurant cult, Karma? There's no menu, you get what you deserve. Today, I'm going to recap a 2019 action fantasy film called Captain Marvel. The film opens with a woman called Verse, profusely wounded, blue blood trickling from her nostrils. An elderly woman with a firearm, aimed at someone, enters her field of vision. Yet, before she can comprehend the scenario, an individual steps forth from the haze, aiming a gun at Furs. Suddenly, she snaps awake, grasping the reality that it was nothing more than a nightmare. Rising, she gazes through her window at Hala, the metropolis and epicenter of Cree civilization, circa 1995. Following this, she seeks out her guide, Yanrock, requesting a training session as sleep eludes her. As he helps hone her combat abilities, he queries whether her dreams have presented any fresh insights, implying she's been experiencing them repeatedly. Growing frustrated by her losses in their skirmishes, she menaces him with a photon blast conjured from her fist. He admonishes her to master her abilities or risk having to engage with the supreme intelligence, reiterating that emotions can be perilous for a warrior. Their confrontation persists, but when she finally discharges the blast at him, they decide to consult the supreme intelligence, the AI that governs the Kree Empire. En route, Verse questions Yan Rock about the physical appearance of the supreme intelligence. He clarifies that it's their subconscious mind that determines how the entity will manifest to them. Yan Rog reiterates his goal of teaching her to master her abilities, reminding her that she must first control her instincts. During her interaction with the Supreme Intelligence, it assumes the form of the elderly woman that frequently appears in her dreams. It communicates to Verz that it doesn't share Yan Rog's confidence in her readiness. It reminds her that she too has suffered due to the aggressive expansion of the scrolls, which has been a menace to their civilization for centuries. The scrolls, their persistent foes, gradually dominate numerous planets and can morph into any shape. They pose a formidable threat to Hala and hence need to be vanquished. The intelligence permits Furs to accompany Starforce on a mission. Subsequently, alongside her Starforce teammates, Min Irva, Korath, Bronchar, and Atlas, Yanrog provides a detailed rundown of a search and rescue operation for an undercover agent named Solar. He advises the team that the Skrulls have taken over the planet, Torfa. Yanrog instructs the squad to undertake a covert operation on the planet. Consequently, Vurz and the Starforce members traverse through water using their specialized suits to surface on the planet. Shortly, they deduce that the indigenous Torfans are actually Skrulls and that they've walked into a trap. The Skrull commander Talos, camouflaged as Solaire, kidnaps Verz and transports her to a Skrull spaceship, while the remaining Starforce members retreat. Aboard the Skrull spacecraft, Talos subjects Verz to a memory scanning procedure, which grants him access to her recollections from various periods of her life. Up to this point, they've only secured the coordinates for planet C-53, otherwise known as Earth, which is their next destination. She regains consciousness just as Talos deciphers her memories, unearthing his pursuit for information related to a light speed engine. She engineers an escape by accidentally causing extensive damage to the ship, leading to a gaping hole. Boarding an escape vessel, she is pursued and fired upon by Talos. Ultimately, her pod crash lands through the ceiling of a blockbuster video in a bustling shopping center. Next, she attempts to communicate with Starforce Command, but her communications gear is inoperable. Upon spotting a security guard, she inquires about the location of communication equipment, and he directs her towards a nearby radio shack. Come morning, Talos and the Skrulls morph into surfers, blending in with the beach crowd in Los Angeles. Concurrently, Verz manipulates a payphone to establish contact with the Starforce Command. Following a brief exchange with Yanrog, she understands she'll be marooned on Earth for the next 22 hours. She also inadvertently catches the attention of S.H.I.E.L.D. after the security guard reports her. Agents Nick Fury and Phil Coulson arrive to question her, disregarding her Kree credentials and her warnings about the Skrull's arrival on Earth. Their interrogation is interrupted by a Skrull, disguised as a surfer, who opens fire. Verz defends Fury by shoving him into the phone booth, subsequently chasing the Skrull. She tracks him through a subway station, encountering an elderly woman en route, 
Successfully boarding the train, she scrutinizes the passengers for any anomaly. She engages with an elderly man who's perusing a mall rat script and returns his friendly smile. The scroll, having altered his appearance, masquerades as an older woman. Despite this, Vers discerns his disguise as the elderly woman she brushed past earlier. Without hesitation, she punches him, leaving the train's passengers aghast. A fight ensues with passengers attempting to restrain her while the scroll takes off. She retrieves a crystal, storing her extracted memories, but the scroll eludes her and disappears into a throng at the train station. Simultaneously, Fury and Coulson are in pursuit of Vers in their vehicle. Fury receives a call from Coulson, who claims he's still at the blockbuster, leading Fury to recognize the Coulson in the passenger seat as a scroll imposter. The impersonator attempts to shoot him, but Fury overpowers him and fatally crashes their car into incoming traffic. He regains consciousness post-crash with minor injuries around his eye, finding the imposter's corpse now revealing an alien with green skin. He manages to conceal it before requesting backup. Later, Verse connects the memory-laden crystal to her communication apparatus. She notices a familiar face of a woman and the name of a bar they frequented. Consulting a map, she identifies the location of the bar. Donning civilian clothes pilfered from a display to replace her conspicuous Star Force uniform, she commandeers a motorcycle to reach Pancho's bar in the nearby town of Rosamond, California. Subsequently, Fury transports the deceased scroll to a laboratory, where an autopsy is performed. He's informed that the body's chemical composition doesn't match anything known on Earth. Their superior, S.H.I.E.L.D. Director Keller, mandates Fury to maintain surveillance on Vers, eventually transitioning her into S.H.I.E.L.D.'s custody. Moreover, he instructs him to undertake this task solo, citing the untrustworthy circumstances given the potential scroll infiltration. As he departs, Keller exhibits grief over the scroll's demise, revealing his true identity as Talos in disguise. Later that day, Vers reaches Pancho's bar, where flashes of memories featuring her and a familiar woman in jovial moments return. Spotting a photograph of a fighter pilot bearing the logo of Project Pegasus, she inquires about the project's location from the bartender. Suddenly, Fury materializes, declaring such information to be classified. Both engage in a questioning session to ascertain that neither is a scroll imposter. Verz verifies her identity by projecting a photon blast from her fist. Consequently, she requests Fury to escort her to Project Pegasus. En route, she informs him that the scrolls are pursuing Dr. Wendy Lawson, the purported creator of a light speed engine. Their objective is to prevent the scrolls from becoming an unstoppable force. Fury takes her to the Joint NASA and U.S. Air Force facility, housing Project Pegasus in Nevada. Upon their detention by security, Fury employs a clever trick with a piece of tape to facilitate their escape. They proceed to the records room, where Verse forces open the locked door with a blast. Along the way, they encounter a cat named Hoos, to which Fury displays affection. Inside, they uncover Lawson's blueprint for the light speed engine, a project which was eventually terminated. Fury dismisses Lawson as insane due to her peculiar notations. However, Verz recognizes these as Cree symbols, prompting her realization of Lawson's Cree heritage. Later, Fury discloses Lawson's death, along with an unidentified pilot, during an unauthorized test flight of the experimental light speed engine six years prior. The last individual to witness them alive was another pilot, Maria Rambo. Verz identifies Lawson as the woman from her recurring nightmares, and she realizes from a photograph that she's the deceased fighter pilot. Subsequently, she communicates with Jan Rock, who verifies Lawson's Cree identity, revealing her undercover alias as Marvell. Marvell had been experimenting with technologies capable of securing a Cree victory in the war. Verse conveys that she has discovered hints of her past life on C-53 and that Lawson is the embodiment of her supreme intelligence. Jan Rog asserts that her memories might have been tampered with by the scrolls and cautions her against letting her emotions overshadow her judgment. He reassures her that they'll soon unravel the mystery as they are approaching her location. Simultaneously, Fury reports their coordinates to Keller. A team of agents led by Keller, including Coulson, soon arrives at the location. 
Keller refers to him by his full name, Nicholas. This familiarity triggers Fury's realization that Keller is a Skrull impersonator, leading him to partner with Furs and break away from S.H.I.E.L.D. Keller unveils his true identity as Talos, but just in time, Vers appears and blasts him away. Shortly after, they encounter Coulson, who instead of hindering them, allows them to escape. Subsequently, they commandeer a quad jet, discovering that Goose has hidden himself aboard. Inspired to gain clarity from Rambo, the last person to have seen Vers and Lawson alive, they set a course for Rambo's residence in New Orleans, Louisiana. Upon their arrival, Maria Rambo and her daughter, Monica, are astounded to find Vers alive. They inform her that her genuine name is Carol Danvers, and that they had considered her part of their family, believing she had perished alongside Lawson. Vers elaborates on her experiences and fragmented memories, while Monica presents her with a box of personal items. The box primarily contains photographs of her past, which Vers is struggling to recollect. Among these items, she finds a fragment of her old dog tags reading Carol Dan. An unexpected knock at the door raises tensions, but it turns out to be a curious neighbor intrigued by the jet in which Fury and Vers arrived. Vers suspects scroll activity, but Maria reassures the neighbor, indicating it's not an appropriate time, and shuts the door. Then Talos appears, still in his scroll form, proposing a temporary alliance. Meanwhile, Norax impersonates Maria, engaging Monica in a diversion outside. Subsequently, Talos discloses that he possesses the black box recording from the plane crash and requests assistance in decoding certain coordinates. He exhibits an irrational fear of Goose, insisting the feline is not a cat but a flurkin. The black box recording triggers Ver's memory, reconstructing the events of the fateful flight. They were attacked by a spaceship and subsequently crash-landed on a small peninsula. As Vers helps Lawson out of the jet, she notices his blue-colored blood, which prompts him to confess his true identity as Marvell, from a planet named Hala. In an effort to keep the energy core away from the Kree, Marvell attempts to destroy it, but is shot and killed by Yanrog before he can do so. Emerging from the smoke, Yanrog assures her they mean her no harm and are only interested in the core. When Vers tries to destroy it, she absorbs the energy from the exploding engine, gaining cosmic powers, but losing her memory in the process. Yanrog seizes this opportunity to take her back to Hala. Talos then elucidates that the Kree have deceived her. He explains that the Skrulls are nomadic refugees, continually fleeing from the Kree and on the verge of extinction. The energy core that Marvell discovered could power a light speed ship, potentially providing the Skrulls with a safe haven unreachable by the Kree. He further clarifies that the core she destroyed was merely the engine and urges her assistance in decoding the coordinates to locate the actual core. Later that night, they successfully determine that the coordinates lead to a laboratory orbiting Earth in outer space. Therefore, Norix adapts their quad jet to be spaceworthy. Meanwhile, Vers reasserts her true identity as Carol and persuades Maria to join her as a co-pilot on this mission. Later, she requests Monica to adjust the colors of her uniform to blue, red, and yellow, mirroring her former U.S. Air Force shirt, signifying her break from the Kree. The following day, Jan Rog lands on Earth, intending to confront Vers. However, he swiftly discerns that the Vers he has been communicating with is, in fact, a scroll, and promptly eliminates him. He then communicates with Ronan, informing him of the scroll infiltration on C-53 and calling for immediate action to wipe them out. Subsequently, Carol, Fury, Talos, Maria, and Goose board the upgraded jet and set a course for Marvell's concealed laboratory, housed within a Kree Imperial cruiser. Within the lab, Carol discovers the Tesseract, the power source for the energy core. They securely store it within a lunchbox for safe transport. Talos sends out a peculiar call, resulting in the emergence of the remaining hidden Kree refugees, leading to a heartfelt reunion with his wife and daughter. He discloses to Carol that thousands more refugees are dispersed across the galaxy, pleading for her aid to gather them. Their reunion is abruptly interrupted by an ambush from the Star Force. As Carol confronts Yanrog about his deceit, he activates her implant, suppressing her powers. 
Carol attempts to combat him without her powers, but is ultimately overpowered and sent into stasis to face the Supreme Intelligence. Meanwhile, her friends and the remaining Kree are taken captive. The Tesseract, encased within the lunchbox, is seized and Goose is caged due to his threatening Furkin identity. In stasis, Carol struggles to break free by challenging the Supreme Intelligence. It insists that the Kree transformed her into Vurs. However, unpersuaded, she rises and asserts that her true identity is Carol. She fights against the Intelligence's control, destroying the Kree implant and unlocking the full potential of her powers. She subdues the guards, and her potent outburst liberates the scrolls and her friends. Retrieving the lunchbox, she instructs Fury to secure the Tesseract, only for Goose to swallow it before he gets a chance. The sight of this shocks Fury and Rhea, but they ultimately accept Goose's true flirk and identity. Carol then instructs them to escort the scrolls and Goose to safety while she creates a diversion. During a fierce struggle for possession of the lunchbox, which Carol falsely claims contains the Tesseract, she pins the Star Force under some wreckage. She incapacitates Bronchar and repels the Kree soldiers. She deftly dodges Min Irva's attacks and subdues her, while simultaneously countering Borath and Atlas's attempts to restrain her. Yanrog manages to extricate himself from the debris to engage her in combat. Upon realizing the Tesseract isn't in the lunchbox, he makes a dash for the hangar and the scrolls. Meanwhile, Carol continues her battle with Bronchard and Borath, once again rendering them unconscious. As Maria and Fury try to reach the quad jet, they are obstructed by several Kree soldiers, but Goose promptly swallows them. Subsequently, they encounter two additional Kree soldiers. Fury attempts to get Goose to consume them, but when he doesn't, they give in. The Kree soldiers escort them to the hangar, from where they plan to launch into space, but one soldier instructs Fury to stay calm, revealing himself to be Talos. He then inquires about the Tesseract's location, to which Fury responds that the Flurkin cat swallowed it. In the meantime, the Skrulls, Maria, and Fury are making their escape on the quad jet, but during the proceedings, Talos is shot by Yanrog, rendering him unable to continue fighting. Maria successfully takes down a Kree ship, blocking their path, triggering an explosion. Yanrog contacts Minerva, ordering her to chase them down in a dropship, and she promptly takes off after the quadjet. As Yanrog tries to flee on another vessel, Carol latches onto it, but he fires at her, causing her to fall. As she tumbles, she manages to control her powers and safely flies away. Minerva pursues the quadjet to the Mojave Desert, but Maria, through her adept flying skills, manages to evade her and shoots her down. Yanrog arrives and fires at them, but Carol intervenes and downs his ship. Suddenly, Ronin the Accuser appears and orders the launch of ballistic warheads. Carol intercepts one of them and hurls it back at the other missiles, causing a domino effect and destroying all the warheads. Upon realizing that it's not C-53's defense system, but Carol causing all the damage, Ronin orders his men to target her. She effortlessly dodges and takes out the smaller ships and one of the Kree warships, forcing the squadron to retreat. Landing, she is challenged to a one-on-one -on -one combat by Yanrog, but she quickly incapacitates him with a photon blast. She sends him back to Hala with a warning from the Supreme Intelligence, declaring her intentions to come and end it all. Meanwhile, on the Quadjet, Fury is admiring Goose for its role in their rescue. But with his guard down, Goose scratches and inadvertently blinds his left eye. The Skrulls take temporary refuge at the Rambu residence, where Talos begins his recovery. Carol promises to aid them in finding a new home and fulfilling Marvel's unfinished mission. Before departing Earth with the Skrulls, she instructs Fury to keep the Tesseract hidden on Earth. She hands him a modified pager to summon her during emergencies. Monica presents her with the leather jacket she had left behind, and Carol bids her and Maria farewell, leading the ship carrying the scrolls. The film concludes a bit later as Fury drafts a strategy called the Protector Initiative to locate more heroes like Carol. Upon learning that her Air Force call sign is Avenger, he renames the plan the Avengers Initiative in her honor. Subsequently, Goose jumps onto Fury's desk and regurgitates the Tesseract. 
During the mid-credits, Steve Rogers, Natasha Romanov, Bruce Banner, and James Rhodes are seen observing the pager Fury set up before he disappeared. Out of the blue, Carol appears and urgently inquires about Fury's location. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.